So just to add a little spice to things, uh, the next interview is going to be conducted by Sarah Gerard, and she's going to be talking with author Shelley Mazzanobo about her book, Confessions of a Part-Time Sorceress. I wanted to get both those two on the show, time didn't permit, so I said, hey, why don't I have Sarah interview Shelley and give you guys somebody to look at other than me for a chance. So here it is. Gamer Radio Zero. This is Sarah Gerard here with Shelley Mazzanobo, author of Confessions of a Part-Time Noble, author of Confessions of a Part-Time Sorcerer, A Girl's Guide to D&D. Shelley, how are you enjoying Gen Con so far? So far, Gen Con is great. This is my first time being here as an author and not just as an employee of Wizards of the Coast. So it's been, it's been really fun just to walk around and actually see the show and meet people and buy some new dice, things like that. Cool. So tell us what inspired you to write this book. Well, I started playing Dungeons and Dragons, as you know, with as you, I do know, um, almost two years ago, mm -hmm. and I came into it with just you know a basic idea of what the game was. I know that there's dice involved. I know there's dungeons, maybe a dragon, but uh, I didn't really know what the game was about. So when I learned how to play it, I thought, oh my God, this is this is a really fun game. It's just storytelling. It's just socializing, it's being with your friends, it's finding a reason to get together every week, it's protecting one another, and I realized this is something that women do naturally with, with their own friends. So, you know, we travel in packs, we protect each other, we love gatherings, and why not kill a zombie while you're at it? And so you think the storytelling nature of the indie appeals to women? I think so. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think, well, think about when you were a kid, mm -hmm. what you would do, you know, we would play house, or, you know, it was, everything was about telling stories and playing make-believe or playing with your Barbies or stuffed animals, in my case. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that it is something that we do naturally, but we tend to outgrow that part of us. And this, I think, is a way to bring it back. So some people would say you don't look like a typical gamer. And what would be your response to that? Well, actually, this was something that we wanted to talk about yesterday. We had a seminar planned for um, talking about women and Dungeons and & Dragons and gaming in general, but there was an administrative error in the program. So there were people at one location, and then there were us at the other location, and everybody was feeling sad and rejected. But um, it is a topic that I think we should discuss, and it, it is something that keeps coming up. My answer to that would be, what is a typical gamer? And I mean, is there really a typical woman or a man that you think would be playing Dungeons and Dragons? And if so, who is this person? And, and why can't anyone play? So, some of your interests you list in the book are shopping and um, making up stories about your inanimate objects. Yes. yes. So how does that work into your gaming experience? Well. Dungeons and Dragons seems to be a game that was made for people like me. You like to tell a story, or you like to be part of a story, and the whole personifying this character, I felt like I really did create Astrid and bring her to life, and I you know, created a backstory for her, and just when you know, your character's out there, or Scott's character, or any of us are out on the, the play map, they're, they interact with each other, and it's... You know, we just get so involved in, in who they are, and they have personalities. Like, we know that our rogue is probably not going to find the triumph, or he's, he'll fall off his horse or something. That we know that Astrid's probably going to hang back behind a column and maybe shoot a magic missile or two. We know that your morally conflicted paladin is probably going to punch a mummy in the face. But, I, I mean, it's just... This is it's something that I, I love doing anyway, and it's nice to have an outlet for that. So Astrid has a website of her own and a MySpace page? Astrid does have a MySpace page. She's, she's getting um, into the technology. She and is, but she's um, apparently too busy to actually update her page, so I, I've been having to pick up a lot of that slack. So how are, how are some of the ways that people can talk to you about their D&D experiences and women can maybe get in contact to... to figure out how to get into gaming and how to find a gamer group or maybe start DMing, what would you recommend they do? Well, thanks to the support of the Dungeons & Dragons brand team, there, there is an effort out there to get women more involved and give them the resources that they need to start playing and learn how to be a DM. So I think probably one of the best ways to, to find out more is to visit our website, um, wizards.com 
slash D&D. And um, check out the message boards. And, and there should be actually a forum for women up there. Um, men can, can be on there too, but this should, it really should, is a place for women to just get on there and ask these questions and find out how to be involved and get support from one another. And hopefully people like you that have experience in gaming and are working in the industry can, can get on there and respond to some of that. Or I can use my experiences and you know, we can all just be out there to support each other. Do you think that women need a, a special forum just for their gender, or? No, I don't think it should ever be a gender-specific thing, but I think that women might feel like they're not being supported in this in this community or, or in this industry, so it might be nice to, for them to feel like there is a place that people are listening and we want to know what they're feeling and what they're thinking and what they're interested in. So. Tell me a little bit about your gamer group. My gamer Our group? Yes. I love my group. I think that that's definitely part of the reason why I love playing D&D so much. You have to be in the right group, obviously. Um, we're a good blend. We're ha um, half men, half women. And so I think that the style of play varies. We're not all fighters. We don't all just want to go in and storm the castle. Some of us want to talk and find out more and um, just before we actually pull out the swords and the missiles. Um, but we're a well-rounded group. We're all good friends outside of, of the group, and I think a part of that reason is because we spend two hours a week trying to save each other's butts. So what kinds of people in real life are in your gamer group? In real life? Mm -hmm. Do you play with people from work? Do you play outside of work? I play with people from work. We all work actually in the same department. Um, so, Have you ever a, been the dungeon master? I tried. I tried to teach my girlfriends that don't play D and D and have never played D and D and never thought they'd want to play D and D. I invited them all over for dinner, gave them lots of drinks, which is D and D. And then um, I tried to be a dungeon master and it didn't didn't go so well. I think there's some people who are just better off as PCs. That's me. So cool. So we can um, read about that in the book. When will your will your book be, be available for purchase? Officially, the book release is September 18th, but there's a limited edition at Gen Con for sale right now. So buy them up before I do. All right. Well, thanks for talking with us today. Thank you, Sarah. Right. This was fun. Yeah, it was fun.